what I say about you, Chrissy. Please don't. <laughs> Em just called my tush fuzzy. You're gonna what? Be complimented? <laughs> you called it fuzzy. <laughs> I could call it worse. I oh. be grateful. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do it. No, I don't want to. All right. Hello, everyone. We are talking about our butts. Well, we're talking about Christine's butt specifically. <laughs> Actually, we were talking about Gio's butt, and then I compared his butt to Christine's butt, and now it's turned into only Christine's butt. Now it's turned into real awkwardness for you. So I'm so sorry. Let's uh, keep doing it. What? Never mind. Let's not. <laughs> okay. Welcome, everyone, to our show where we talk about murder. And butts. Always. Just like Tina Belcher. Yeah. Um... How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Uh, I'm pretty good. I wanted to say one quick thing is that, um, yes, we now know that Jim Henson was involved in Sesame Street. Thank you a for telling us. A lot of people yelled at us about that. I'm sorry. I don't even remember what we said. Probably. I, no, it was me because I was talking about uh, our the design on our shirts. Oh, sure. Jim Henson. And then I was like, are we Muppets? And then we were like, no. And, and then we were like, I'm Elmo and you're Kermit. And then someone sent that really awful, horrendous <laughs> picture around the intersphere. Oh, I love it. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I will say thank you for uh, correcting us. But now we know. Yes. I appreciate it. Um, anyway, how are you, Em? Mm, good. I'm good. Great. I'm leaving tomorrow for Maine. Yes, we're going to Maine for Fair. some lobster. Some, yeah. I don't like lobster. You so. don't? You like it, so why would I? That's at true. This point? We don't like the same thing. For those of you who, I don't know who I've yelled at this, I don't know who I've yelled this to, so I'm just going to keep screaming it until I know I've covered all my bases. Mm -hmm. But everything Christine does not like to eat, I like to eat. Everything I do, I do not like to eat, Christine loves. So. It's usually the other way around because there's barely anything I don't like to eat. I will eat, literally eat pretty much everything in this world. Most of the time, if Christine says, oh, Let's get dinner here. They have a delicious blank. I will not order that. Except for I don't ever say that because I know better. <laughs> In the beginning, I think that's how things went, though. I remember I was like, like, oh, I don't know how to tell her. One of the first night. Oh, you knew. You, you told me real quick. One of the first nights you came over, Blaze and I had made pizza, homemade pizza, and there were anchovies on it. I didn't need to say anything. Let's be clear. You should have known. I should have. Hey, here's someone I don't really know their food preferences yet. Let's make anchovy okay, pizza. You literally walked in and said, oh, what are you making? We didn't even offer it to you. You that's were just like. First, that's your first and, and second problem. You went, gross. I'm going to order my own food. And we went, OK, welcome to our home. And that's how our friendship has been ever <laughs> since. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> so speaking of anchovies. What? Speaking of anchovies, let's hear it. Uh, I've updated Patreon. That's my segue. <laughs> That's my segue. To all of our little anchovies out there. <laughs> to all of our yummy little anchovies. I love that. Um, I have updated. Uh, oh, I wanted to say, too, I forgot to mention, I feel really bad about it, that last week. So I did Dorothea Puente. And that was sent in on Instagram close friends by Autumn Beth. And I, like, forgot to give them credit for it. So I apologize. Um, but speaking of Patreon and anchovies, uh, I just wanted to point out, I'm, I spent a long time on it, so I'm going to yell it into your ears. But Oh, I, yeah. Christine worked very, very hard. I reorganized the entire Patreon because I wanted to make sure. I found there was content from 2017 that we had made that, like, blooper reels and things that were just buried under like hundreds of posts mm. and so i was like how do we make this accessible to new patrons and so i reorganized it there's like i made a youtube playlist of every unlisted youtube video that like you can't access unless you're a patron so on our youtube channel um you can find that if you are a patron um and you can uh i've pulled out all our old blooper reels and they are wild um, i'm gonna show them to you later great there's one of you just screaming at geo and that sounds right there's one of you seeing a ghost dog in my old apartment it's a lot of fun stuff. It checks out. A lot of spilling wine, a lot of yelling at each other. But um, thank you for organizing that because you definitely put a lot of work into it. So oh my God. Uh, sorry. I I'm know. proud of you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm proud <laughs> of us because I listen to all the old content. I was like, oh my gosh, we should like reintroduce this because it's so much fun. Um, and so I found, so I found our first ever birthday exchange, which apparently we turned into like a 45 minute episode. That sounds right. On Patreon. And it's so funny because we were like just gushing over one another's like birthday gifts and it was so Aww. fun you you had invited me to my first ever escape room that was like my present oh i do remember that yeah and it was super fun um and oh in that one i we introduced the thanksgiving song for the first time in that, that was when huh? on patreon which i didn't even know also i'm seeing the full circle now of the point you made about like your first birthday i took you to an escape room and then for christmas i literally just made you one exactly i see the climb now and yes. now there's a, a lemon escape room on patreon anyway there's <laughs> wow. also a bonus episode i found where we tell our own 
scary stories. Like, I don't remember doing these things. I truly, you could tell me <laughs> pretty much anything happened in the last two years. And I'd be like, okay. Oh my God. There's one where we played strip poker and we just put it on Patreon. First, the first half of that sentence, I was like, <laughs> I don't know if that's a joke. Do I laugh or do I go? Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I organize it also at the top of Patreon. Now, if you're a patron, you can click like the categories. There's like live streams. There's um a bonus episodes. There's blooper reels all that so um if you Very are a patron exciting. i want to make sure you guys have access to all that stuff so that's my little spiel please um, go watch all the things we blacked out of, from doing apparently. yeah come on my little anchovies also if you look far enough i know enough of you fucking google me with my long hair i know oh, y'all are trying to fucking yuck. find that so first of all rude second of all i fucking know because google tells me what people look up google tells us the weird shit you guys google <laughs> third of all if you are de- that desperate to see me with long hair if you look far back i'm sure there's a video with me like oh i don't know if we did videos back then we didn't oh. have fa- <laughs> we didn't have fancy fucking phones back then we had a microphone but when we started i did have long hair Yikes. yeah but you put it all always in like your under your hat so many things have changed i know i didn't oh even see it though when you had long hair you put it under your hat meanwhile i'm currently in a hat because i got a haircut yesterday and my hair is like the shortest it's ever been and i kind of hate it you finally know it's like to have a bald spot like me thank god do you know how long <laughs> i wanted a full bald spot on my entire head okay speaking of bald spots um back to patreon real quick we have a, a patron of the week named brady our favorite little bald spot our favorite little bald spot anchovy a bald anchovy that probably sounds like something gross i'm sorry uh brady d brady design i don't know if i'm supposed to say their last name too late hello brady thank you so much for being a patron we appreciate your support yes hopefully you can go watch uh or hear content on patreon you can hear em's long hair and my you can hear my long hair blowing in the wind probably (laughs) blowing in the wind of my old ass tiny apartment yeah the longest it ever was by the way it was always up because i hated it then i hate it now it was under a hat everyone go on youtube right now and watch how bald my my head is that's what you should be looking at oh okay. for this episode for this yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. also you won't see anything because i'm wearing a hat okay <laughs> a hat is my trademark let's be clear did you not know that after three years i can't believe people google you with long hair that's so gro- weird I, oh it is gross i, I mean, know you were gonna say the you word and gross. i google weirder shit but still it's weird to think people google shit about us i hated what i looked like then so if you are contributing to the google search of my long hair please stop i feel like it's when people google like so and so like uh without makeup or whatever like those like really rude ones where they try to find celebrities in like not their finest hour or something oh, you know what I, mean? I my my top five by the way because i have googled myself and I, ch- I check every now and then truly just to see if the long hair one is gone and it never is oh great but m schultz long hair m schultz linda which my mother cannot be Whoa. more proud of m schultz allison m schultz net worth which by the way is like a hot zero dollars so I, I don't know what people are looking I for i found mine like listed somewhere and it said 350 dollars and i said wow they're spot on <laughs> i was like that's incredible <laughs> how did they know and then uh i think it's m schultz geo mine's just oh yeah so, like everyone but you <laughs> mine's just like m schultz or sorry, m Sch- mine's just m schultz <laughs> christine in love with m schultz oh my god question mark long hair uh mine bald spot no mine just says christine she for a brother christine oh. she for blaze christine she for wedding pictures that's a big oh, one that's precious i know that's really sweet christine she for geo uh and like nothing exciting i don't think um age husband birthday <laughs> age as old as the crypt keeper podcast <laughs> Let that be the first answer on Google from now I on. I love it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just Googled M. Schultz. Oh, my God. There's new ones. Hold on, guys. No, there's not. I just Googled M. Schultz. I typed it in and then auto, auto-filled. Here we go. M. Schultz Wikipedia, which, fuck you guys, everyone assuming you have one and I don't. Also, someone make me a Wikipedia. What I know. the fuck? Where's our Wikipedia? Uh, M. Schultz clown. Okay. M. Gross. Schultz age. M. Schultz pronouns. Okay, that's, that's better than good. long hair. That's better than long hair. M. Schultz props. Wow, these are interesting. Interesting. And M. Schultz as Zach Bagans. <laughs> Shut the fuck I'm up. I'm not kidding. Look at my screen. <laughs> I'm not even making that up. Why is that one of the things people look Why up the most? Why is mine so normal? It's just like age, I'll look brother, up, maybe, husband. Hold on, I'm going to look up on my computer because maybe, maybe it'll be different. different. Maybe. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are I'm so sorry. Christine Schiefer. Christine Schiefer. Oh, wait. Christine okay. Schiefer Schultz. <laughs> Christine Schiefer podcast. Christine Schiefer wedding. Christine Schiefer age with Christine Schiefer brother. Christine Schiefer M. Schultz. Christine Schiefer husband. Christine Schiefer birthday. Yeah, it yours. Hit a space. It doesn't change anything. No. no. Yeah. Um. So yeah, mine are pretty boring. Yours seem very interesting. Oh, but if you click Christine Schiefer M. Schultz, there's a slew of pictures of us. We are just darn we cute. Are gems, huh? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. Okay. Anyway, guys, sorry. That did not mean to... I'm so sorry. That sounded wildly vain the last five minutes. We keep doing this, and it's more just that we find it hysterical. I just meant stop looking up pictures of me with long hair, yeah. but then it turned into me Googling myself, so... Yeah. Whoops. Well, I feel like most of our hangout sessions include us Googling ourselves and, like, cackling. You know what? I really do want a Wikipedia one day. Me I am going to put that that's, out there. That's, like, on our vision board. I think we put it on a past, past vision board, and it hasn't happened yet. Wikipedia 2020, yeah. You know, we are... My name's in there. But once, and it's listed as like Christine Schieffer covered this story. Some oh, but that's really it. yeah, but that's that, cool. it's in a footnote. I got um, I got listed on my school's notable alum. I sure didn't. And th- well, then uh, high school or college? College. Oh, what? And then um, and then I checked like two weeks later, and it was gone. So I was like, oh well, that was <gasps> no. Fun. Do you <laughs> yeah. think so? Oh wait, was it on Wikipedia? Yeah. Oh, so someone literally just added it, and then someone added it, and then someone Wikipedia else deleted was like, it. No. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say I'm jealous, but uh, people who went to American are like Judge Judy. So I don't hope to compete with her ever. I actually. And well, like some presidents. We ha- Yeah. We have some politicians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The coolest people I think to come out of uh, CNU though are me and then the guy who created you. the. <laughs> Truly. No. We're You're a small so... school. We're a small school. Wow. Talk about being vain. You're like the coolest people are me. <laughs> and that's me, me, me. Um, but no, I, there's a guy, Randall Monroe. He uh, he created the comic, the XKCD um if you look them it's like a stick figure comic oh, that everyone you've shown knows. me this yeah yeah and he's made a bunch of books he also came from cnu well i want to be as cool as him one day i think Jul- what's her name juliana rancic or whatever went to my school you know damn him? and uh Ju- goldie hahn too where did zach bagans go because did he if you went to the same school that zach bagans went to you should immediately be put on well, now alum. i fucking see what people are googling about zach bagans and it's like dating girlfriend can you oh, imagine God if on it. google it said zach bagans and m schultz or zach bagans and christine schieffer oh. or zach bagans and then that's why we drink to be fair you are now listed on google as m schultz with zach bagans name next to it that's Yikes. pretty cool moving on to and that's why we drink oh my god so sorry we're gonna get sued really soon by that guy by the way or it's, by somebody by one of you i don't know someone's gonna sue us pretty soon it's funny until all of a sudden we get a literal lawsuit sent yeah. to us <laughs> Um, and then we just start crying. We don't know what to and do. And then all of a sudden we will, for some reason, stop talking about him 100% of the time. Yikes. Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's, let's, let's try and tell about... a story because we've definitely done this for 15 oh, minutes. God, sorry, y'all. Uh, oh, we're on Urban Dictionary. Get, go away. Okay. We as a team? You and me? And that's where your drink is. Oh, I didn't know if it was Go like away. <laughs> Christine and Em. Trying to make you feel better. Uh, with Urban Dictionary, now I feel like it's a weird sex thing. <laughs> it probably is. I didn't read the de- that, the definitions in there. I don't want to know what it says. It probably says like shitty podcasts where they only talk about themselves all the time. <laughs> shitty, two shitty people that Google themselves. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna try to quickly just get th- let's go get through this. Okay, so I am covering another cryptid. This is one that I've wanted to cover since I covered the Bridgewater Triangle. Okay, I love Bridgewater Triangle. That was a great episode. Love a good Bridgewater Triangle. And I said I would cover this back then. Put it on hold. Now we're back in the game. Oh, I think I might know what it is. Say it. A th- uh, Thunderbird? Yes. No, I guessed it. I'm surprised. Did you look because, at my notes? No, no, no. Because um, that was the one where I was like, I've heard about those. And then you said, I w- I'll cover it someday. Well, today's But that's Sunday. the only creature I really remember except those weird little ones that you already covered, the Puckwudgies. Oh. We're also from that, right? From yes. Bridgewater. Okay. Because yeah, I remember, the- so, like I've heard on Jim Carroll, a lot of people call in with Thunderbird stories. So I don't know much about it. Oh, I wish I knew that before I did oh. these notes. Could no, have but it's written hard. them up. Yeah, but you can't like, I don't think you can search through the Yeah, you campfire. have to listen to all of them. Yeah. Okay, so yes, I'm covering the Sorry. Thunderbirds. Okay, wow, the first time I've literally ever guessed your story. <laughs> it's a wild, it's a wild day. Uh, so, what is a Thunderbird, some like Christine may ask? I do. I do. What is it? Uh, it is a giant bird with a pointed beak and razor sharp talons with a wingspan of on average 15 to 20 feet. Oh, dear God. And it is known amongst uh, specifically different uh, native tribes. It is sometimes seen as a deity. I think for the most part it is. Um, otherwise, it's just um, a creature in their uh in their stories that they tell um they are apparently so large that some of the northwestern tribes like quileute um they say that this bird is so big it can carry lakes on its back whoa and it can block out the sun when it flies by and it can carry whales in its talons so like a whale in a, in a lake a whale like its little toes are just grabbing it oh uh, in its talent oh i see yeah imagine like scooping something up with your toes but it's the size of a whale like, well, by the blowhole that's exactly it <laughs> just one little dip um disgusting Gross. so uh apparently when its strong wings flap together they actually create the sound of thunder 
So that's why they're called Thunderbirds. Okay, makes sense. And lightning comes from their eyes. Sure it does. Of course. So it's like Thor as a bird. Sure. It's a a Thor bird instead of a Thunderbird. Okay, good. Sure, yeah. Let's appropriate that into the Marvel verse. Marvel verse? I apologize to anyone I'm offending. (laughs) Me only. (laughs) I want to make that clear. Only me. Uh, So typically they are seen right before a severe thunderstorm, and most often they are seen in the spring and summer months, which makes sense because it's also usually when the most storms are. Sure. Um. In native traditions, thunderbirds are associated with both life and death. And if you are um, a native, and I'm saying this wrong, please correct me. I, I tried. I'm if I'm offending you, I'm certainly not trying to. Um, So they are associated with both life and death, and they come around in the spring usually, um, and bring the rain, uh, which is like their version of creating life because they're helping nourish plants. Um, They also bring storms and destruction, though. So they have the power to give us rain, but they also have the power to give us storms. And um, if the lightning strikes somewhere, a fire could start. So they're known for like life and death because they can create sure. and destroy. Makes sense. Um, many legends say that the Thunderbird, uh, the Thunderbirds are here to protect us, but they also will deal out harsh punishments if they feel like you are um, morally <gasps> askew. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know anything about that. We are so morally not askew. We're morally skew. Well, there's actually <laughs> there's one story where I guess a Thunderbird killed a whale for food and then a whole village found the whale and ate ate the whale before the thunderbird could and he was so mad that they stole his food which this sounds like me if i were a mythical creature <laughs> he turned the entire village into stone like people included oh shit like he was like you'll just be rocks for the He's rest like, of your life i know that i'm supposed to use water to do this but i'm just gonna turn you into rocks <laughs> it's like bada bing bada <laughs> stone okay oh man uh some say that there was a thunderbird who uh fought a big like enormous killer whale at one point it wasn't a killer whale it was uh, some other name Um, But it's apparently the ancestor of the killer whale. Oh. And when the two of these creatures fought, they destroyed a lot of the land in the nearby area, knocking down a lot of trees and causing a lot of destruction. But eventually the Thunderbird allowed the, like, let the whale escape. And that's why we have killer whales today, is one of the stories I read. Oh, I see. Um, They're also, though, seen as benevolent nature spirits that will sometimes assist uh, tribes with finding food during periods of famine. Um, as quote spirits of the sky they are uh, links between the spirit world and the physical world so they're considered sacred um, they were created by um, i hope i'm saying this right nana nana bazo which is uh, one of the spirits in a lot of native stories um, in the like the story of creation mm. um, so nana bozo created uh, the thunderbird to fight underwater creatures and to protect humans against evil spirits so it's known to specifically protect us from oh. underwater spirits because since it kind of rules the sky, sure, sure. its natural enemy would be what's in the water. Right. Okay. A little yin and yang there. Sure, sure. Um, so apparently they are also known as Wakanyan Tanka, uh, the Great Thunderbird. And uh, this originates from one of the seven Western tribes known as the Brule I, know, I never know how to say this tribe. Sui? Su. Su? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I tr- I'm really trying over Sigu? here. Sigu? Sigu. <laughs> it's actually the Segway tribe. Um, no. Oh Su. Su. The Brule Su. Uh, and a Su medicine man named John Fire Lame Deer, he recalls the, uh, the story of the Thunderbird. Um, he talked about it in 1969, saying that the Thunderbird lives on top of a mountain in the Black Hills. Um, although he's probably moved away at this point um, because a lot of white people have just like come in and like what? ruined the land. No, we would never. Listen, you're complaining about white people <laughs> as you would, fucking should, by the way. We would never do such a what thing. What are you talking about? Destroying land and getting in the way of natives? Taking things that don't belong to us? <laughs> that sounds absurd. It sounds like nothing like us. So he thinks that the Thunderbird was like, goodbye and uh, fucking flew away. Don't blame him. Fair. And uh, apparent. so this is a, a quote from him. <clears throat> about the the thunderbird his voice is the great thunderclap and the smaller rolling thunders that follow is his uh his sorry his voice is the great thunderclap and the smaller rolling thunders that follow his booming shouts are the cries of his children oh so you're like the big one and there's the echo and those are all of his little kitties oh that's cute they're like calling out after him yeah like echoing what he says cute. there are apparently four large old thunderbirds like the og thunderbirds okay like um, the golden girls but like thunderbirds yes blanche obviously <laughs> the best uh, the gold, golden birds <laughs> Jesus. wait a minute i'm sorry guys 
the thunder golds uh so what <laughs> you're right i like the golden birds better thank you uh so there's one in each cardinal direction so the one in the west apparently is black the one in the north is red the one in the east is yellow and the one in the south is white oh and so lame deer again this is the same conversation in 1969 uh lame deer says from time to time, a holy man catches a glimpse of a thunderbird in his dreams, but always only a part of it. No one ever sees the, the thunderbird as a whole, not even in a vision. Wow. So the way we think a thunderbird looks is pieced together from many dreams and visions combined. Oh, I just got goose cam about that. It's super cool. That's fascinating that like over time, there have only been pieces that come up in visions even. Yes. Wow. So remember that comment later i'm gonna get sure. back to that okay so there's different information told uh, about the thunderbird based on different tribes some of this um to my understanding to the best of my very ignorant understanding is that uh a lot of this kind of overlaps but based on the tribe there's little small details that are different got it um i don't think they're like completely different stories based on whatever tribe you're from okay so in one tribe um menemini the menemini tribe uh thunderbirds live on a mountain that floats in the sky they control the elements and they are highly respected by these people that seems to be an over mm. an overarching theme and the o ojibwe o ojibwe no I'm, idea. So I'm, I'm so sorry fuck i'm like such a shitty white person um the, <laughs> jesus christ it's it's not it's not you it's me uh the, well, let's just blame houdini again let's just blame white people we <laughs> as we should really start doing all the time lordy uh so the thunderbirds were punished uh oh the thunderbirds would punish humans who broke moral rules like i said they mm. were said to fight underwater spirits during this uh through the springtime until migration specifically oh and then they would come back because apparently that's when all the underwater spirits would kind of cool off for a while sure um the winnebago tribe says that the thunderbirds would also grant people powers so any man who had a vision of a thunderbird um, during fasting would become a mighty war chief wow uh the sioux tribe say that they protect us from reptilian monsters okay the uh, arapaho uh, tribe says that the thunderbird is actually a summer bird only and it's opposing uh it's the opposing bird to the white owl which represents winter oh interesting okay um the algonquin uh tribe says the thunderbirds were ancestors of the human race actually and they were involved oh. in the creation of the universe they rule the upper world and they are specifically geared at always protecting us from the great horned serpent which actually i think was also in the bridgewater triangle oh i don't remember but you're probably right um and then the shawnee tribe says that thunderbirds could change its appearance uh so t essentially shapeshifters um they appeared specifically as little boys oh interesting but you could identify if it was actually a little boy or a shape-shifting Thunderbird because the Thunderbirds could only speak backwards. Oh, God. Ew. So if a little boy's just screaming in reverse, you know it's not a little boy. Oh, my God. Have you ever tried playing songs backwards like when you were little? We always thought there was like secret demonic. Oh, back masking. Yeah, demonic messages. I actually have that on my list of stories to cover. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we would p upload like, um, I don't know, the Grateful Dead or like the Rolling Stones into... Uh, into a back masking website and then like play it backwards and it was like these are the lyrics like uh the devil is coming well like, if you played the pokemon theme song backwards you can hear them just chanting i love satan i love yeah, satan. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> or like There's stairway some... to heaven backwards stairway to heaven and... is like uh yeah yeah the devil oh shit i forget it but then there's one of uh, a Beatles song where before and it was like paul is a dead man oh oh miss him, miss no him. it's save him save him oh, i i heard miss him miss him oh but... I Same. don't know. Maybe it, it could be. I remember playing the same song. I mean, I think it's probably none of them, but it, I actually we might. I mean, Miss Him, Miss Him makes more sense. The one that I put that song into on a website gave you the lyrics. So I think I just, yeah. it decided for me what it said uh, and I read it. But uh, there's like a Queen song too that yes. if you play, um, oh my God. uh, Another one bites the dust. If you play backwards, it's fun to smoke marijuana. That's my favorite one. Yeah. I forgot. It's fun to smoke. And we were like, wow, it is demonic. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so yeah, yeah. funny. Someone Anyways. should play like our podcast backwards and see Please if there's anything weird. Please don't do that because I'm sure it's full of satanic messages. Did you see the TikTok uh, where they, god damn it, I can't remember it now. Is this but our podcast now? We talk about TikTok. There's three words or if you say, they're not really three words or three sounds, but you say it, um, if you play it backwards, it says something like fuck my life or <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll do it later. It's like it's it makes you say the word fuck. But 
Uh, wow. I know. I'm not really nailing this, like, <laughs> this, the illusion here. But it's a big TikTok thing. And I was like, oh, I should do that on Christine sometime. And then I forgot until just now. Well, that worked really well for you. Also, I just think that's really <laughs> creepy that the little boys talk backwards. Well, it's even creepier because this is how they shapeshift. They literally just remove their feathers like it's a giant blanket, like a cloak. Okay. So imagine like a blanket of feathers. I and love you just that. take it right off. I'm on board with that. And then they take their beaks and then like a mask, just put it on their forehead. Oh, That's- so they walk around with little party, ha- party hats. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're little boys. Oh. <laughs> It makes no sense. Who talk backwards? Ooh, that's creepy, though. I really don't. It really freaks me out. Imagine if it were as simple as, like, throwing a blanket off of you and putting a mask on your head and then just, like, talking in reverse. Just putting on a little party hat and being like, it's me. It's fun to smoke marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Uh, so um, here is the here are some of the sightings. There's they're all kind of vague sightings, but it has been seen for a long time, like since the 1800s. I'm going to get into a specific story from the 1800s in a little bit, so I'm just going to start at the 1940s. In the 1940s, there was a guy named Robert who spotted a Thunderbird, allegedly, sitting on a road, and it had a 20-foot wingspan. In 1948, there were also several witnesses that saw a condor-like bird about the size of a small airplane. Oh. In 1969, a woman saw an enormous bird with a wingspan that was as long as the creek was wide. Very southern, I imagine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> knee high the, grasshopper knee high whatever as the cra- crow flies but as the thunderbird flies that is what creek, we should get siri to start saying creek wide i don't know in 1970 there were several people who saw a gigantic bird soaring with uh dark colored feathers and its wingspan was that of an airplane oh casual okay. um and then in 1977 this story got a lot of traction um because it was actually written about uh in a newspaper In Lawndale, Illinois, there was a 10-year-old little boy named Marlon Lowe who was reportedly attacked by two of these giant birds. Oh, shit. His mother, Ruth, saw these two birds hovering a few feet above her yard. One of them grabbed Marlon off the ground and then dragged him 30 feet. Oh, my God. Um, And then Ruth went out and scared them, and the birds dropped him and flew away. But apparently a lot of people saw this, like a lot of witnesses were here, so uh, the police actually took the report really seriously. And in the newspaper called the Freeport Journal Standard, they had a description of this bird that said it had a white ring around its half foot long neck. The rest of the body was very black. The bird's bill was six inches in length and hooked at the end. (gasps) The claws on the feet were arranged with three front, one in the back. So like I imagine a normal claw Mm -hmm. uh, on a bird. Um, Each wing less, uh, each wing was four feet at the very least and the entire length of the bird's body from beak to tail feather was approximately four and one and a half feet. Okay. Four and a half feet. Sorry, they spelled four and one half feet. Sorry. Um, but so that becomes a running theme that th- the Thunderbird from the sky is on average, it has a wingspan of like 15 to 20 feet. And when it, people see it sitting up close and personal, it's about four to five feet tall. So it's still a four foot standing oh, bird. It's geez. terrifying. Um, I can't believe multiple people saw this child getting attacked. Yeah, to a point where, like, it was taken seriously by police. In 2001, there was a 19-year-old who saw an enormous winged creature flying over Route 119 in Pennsylvania. Apparently, this witness heard a sound that resembled flags flapping in a thunderstorm. Whoa. And saw a bird that had a wingspan of 10 to 15 feet, and its head was three feet long on its own. Uh, The witness said, quote, I wouldn't say it was flapping its wings gracefully, but almost horrifically flapping its wings very slowly and then gliding above the passing big rig trucks. Ooh. And then the bird landed on a branch and almost broke the branch because it was so heavy. (laughs) Sad. Me in a tree, by the way. Um, Me in a tree. (laughs) So another witness in 2001 saw a, a, quote, dark creature flying, thinking it was a small airplane, but it had a fully feathered body. And estimated the wingspan to be about 15 feet, and its body length was another 5 feet. Wow. Um, another witness saw a bird with a wingspan, again, 15 feet wide, and was de- the, this bird was described as a dark gray bird with little or no neck and a circle of black under its head. Its beak is very thin and long, about a foot in length. So a foot long beak. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Um, in 2012, Alaska, a lot of Alaska residents reported seeing this bird and it was, everyone said it was the size of a small plane with at least a 14 uh, foot wingspan. God. And in 2013, there were two more people in the woods that saw a large bird saying, quote, it was extremely loud. And I glanced up and saw a huge black bird sitting above us and we seemed to startle it. It flew about a hundred feet to a nearby branch. Its wingspan was at least 10 feet long 
And judging how far it was, it looked to be around four feet tall. Mm. In 2018, on a, in a Facebook group on a, for a woman named Tabitha Bauer, who lived in Juneau, Alaska. This is all in Alaska. Tabitha said, um, a huge, I just saw a huge black bird flying above the road. The wingspan was at least 20 feet long. It was as wide as the road. I have lived here all my life and have never seen anything like that. It freaked me out. It was not a raven or an eagle. This isn't a joke. This thing was huge, <gasps> almost the size of a small airplane. I believe you, Tabitha. <laughs> um, and then also, quick fun fact, investigations of earlier sightings in the 1800s were uh, published in 1870, 1874, 1881, and also 1904. They were all Thunderbird, oh, wow. all Thunderbird reports in Alaska. So it's weird that, I mean, sometimes it's, you know, in the Bridgewater Triangle, which was in like Massachusetts. Right. And other times it's like the other side yeah, of the country. It's Alaska. Wow. Um, so because there have been so many sightings in Alaska, people have actually taken it seriously of like, what could it possibly be? And a lot of people think it might just be a giant bird, because if you think about a lot of animals in Alaska, they're all enormous compared to their uh, to their species so there's like the moose is fucking massive a kodiak bear oh um, a polar bear apparently those are like two of the largest bears um so they think like it would make sense that based on like environmental factors of you need to eat a lot you need to be big and have like a lot of fur or feathers on you to stay warm it's not hard to believe that there would be another massive sized animal and there's so few people comparatively to like a place right so they think that it might just be like um that in, make, in the, they, sorry I, I realized when i said out loud it didn't make sense but i think i think i was trying to say like they aren't what was i trying i don't even know what i was trying to get at i think what you were trying because i my brain are understood you okay good <laughs> <laughs> i was like i think i said the opposite i don't know i'm confusing myself i'm sorry because there aren't as many people or there's not big of a population that the, there's less reports there is that what you were gonna mm. say or that like uh maybe they're not spotted maybe if they're there we Maybe don't know not- as much about them because there are fewer people to report them. But when they are seen, it's like a bigger deal. I would because if would they say were so. located somewhere like in Boston or whatever, people would see them all the time. I don't right. know. Yeah, yeah I say- guess so. That is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. God, I, I'm sorry. I hear you and you hear me, but no one else hears us. Our brains are, <laughs> you know, like everyone else is like just fucking move on. Okay, just play it backwards and you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the formula to life. Um, <laughs> So uh, they think that it's probably honestly just a giant fucking bird in the Pacific Northwest or Alaska, (laughs) and it's like not a monster. It just happens to maybe have evolved into a bigger version of itself just to stay warmer. um, Oh, interesting. During the winter. Yeah. So they're like, maybe it's not a monster. It could just be a big bird. Uh, Big Bird. Hey, Muppets. Jim Henson. You know all about that. We we know all about it. So the biggest, uh, most famous account of the Thunderbird is uh, in April of 1890 in Tombstone, Arizona, in the newspaper called Tombstone Epitaph, there they printed a story about these two ranchers in the desert who saw a, quote, seemingly exhausted winged creature flying a short distance. Okay. The creature was described as, quote, a huge alligator with an extremely elongated tail and an immense pair of wings. What? So... A flying alligator. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. So the ranchers, they were on horseback. They saw it. They were like, well, we have to shoot it. Because I guess that's what you do when you're a rancher in 1890. In Amer- America. Oh, sure. Sure. You're just like, I've got a gun. It's time to shoot something. So <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> it's fucking been a while. I've never seen anything like that. Gotta have it. <laughs> it's mine. Remember how white people don't take anything <laughs> from nature or exactly. otherwise? Exactly. Like, I see it. I want it. <laughs> Like that Ariana Grande song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, like yeah. it. I love it. I want it. It's about al- it's about actually giant alligators. If you t- play, <laughs> play it backwards, that. you can hear her saying, <laughs> alligator, 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 alligator. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, they went on horseback. They chased it down. They shot it. They uh, It ended up falling f- to the ground, and they killed it. Um, congratulations. Wow. You cool. did it. Did it. Now it's taxidermied or what? <laughs> so they ended up examining it because sure. they were like, what was that thing in the sky? Um and then they measured it, found out it was 92 feet in length. What? And the greatest diameter was 50 inches. It had a 160 foot wingspan. Wait, and they shot it with one bullet and killed it? <laughs> and oh, it had I don't an, know. And it had an alligator head. And it was listening to Ariana Grande. It was, it, yes. <laughs> uh, it now belongs to her. <laughs> it, so it had a 160 foot wingspan, <laughs> which was difficult to measure because the wings had folded under the body and so massive this they couldn't very pull sad. it out. Okay. So the wings were apparently, remember I said it was like an alligator yeah. head? So it's kind of reptilian looking instead of it being necessarily bird-like. Sure. And the wings were made of a thick, almost clear membrane with no feathers or hair. 
It <laughs> had an eight foot head. Like, so two feet more of me is the head. Oh, for God's sake. We don't need Yowza. any of that. Sharp teeth, which goes without saying, I mm. imagine. And quote, Wait, but the beak, it has teeth? It has t- be- teeth and its beak. Yeah, see, like, that's weird, though, because birds don't have teeth, you know? Well, I guess when you're half alligator, you got teeth. I know. Um, and, quote, its eyes were as large as dinner plates. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> um, so the ranchers cut off a piece of the wing to have proof, <gasps> and they went home to prep skinning it, and they also had made uh, arrangements to bring it back into town to have sure. it studied. And so they came back to the site with, quote, several prominent men mm. who planned to help bring it into town. And we never got an update after that. The paper just stopped there. What? They just said that, oh, well, they're bringing it into town. And then we never found out what the fuck it was. What? So then a lot of people thought maybe it's a government conspiracy or something of like, oh. They came inf- in and took it. Yeah. Information got leaked. We're going to leave it at what it's at. And no one's ever going to find out about and this. Shush thing. the media. Exactly. So the paper never reported it again, but the story got picked up later by an L.A. paper. Mm. And the author believed that the creature was actually the, quote, monster of Elizabeth Lake, which I have not covered. Um, but apparently that monster had been missing for a while. And like, <laughs> no, one, it no one had seen it. And they were like, oh, it now learned how to fly. And someone shot it down in terrible in Illinois or something. Um, so the sightings uh continued from from the 1830s to the 1880s uh this is for the monster of elizabeth lake oh okay there had been sightings from the 1830s to the 1880s and then this happened in 1890 Mm. and they were like we haven't seen this monster in a while maybe you shot it by accident but not by accident very much on purpose (laughs) right exactly so the monster of elizabeth lake is described as having the head of a bulldog the neck of a giraffe the wings of a bat Six legs uh. and is 50 feet long and smells nauseating. Okay, very specific. Apparently, it would kill farm animals and occasionally fishermen around the lake. Mm. Um, so they thought, okay, maybe it's this creature, even though they never mentioned like it can fly and right. like has a massive 160 foot wingspan. And sometimes it goes to Arizona on vacation, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And also, it's part alligator. Oh, it's right. like it definitely one had an alligator head, one had a bulldog yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, different yeah, yeah, animals. Yeah. So uh, one story says that a rancher shot at it, but um, didn't kill it. So maybe it got scared and fled to Tombstone, Arizona. They think that that's Aww, what would have... he was injured or tired or whatever. Yeah. So it, since it was the monster of if it was the monster of Elizabeth Lake, maybe yeah. a fisherman really tried to get at it when it was in the lake. Right. It got scared f- up, up and out of the water and flew to Arizona. And then it was tired. It was like BTW. I have wings. Now. What a story. What a fucking story. What a story. Let me lift my beak over my face, and now I'm a shapeshifter, and I can fly, and also I'm an alligator. (laughs) So, all of this, if it's hard to believe that maybe this isn't real, let me assure you now. In 1963, there was a guy named Jack Pearl who claimed that uh, there was actually a photo of the capture of this creature. Remember all those prominent men came and took a picture with this thing? all the prominent men. So, apparently, they, they all took a picture with this creature... Um, and it was published in the Tombstone Epitaph article. And the picture showed six cowboys in front of a large winged creature, which had been nailed to the side of a barn. Okay, come on. So a lot of people, if you look up that picture, people will say, oh, I've seen that before. Like, oh, I know about that. Um, but something weird's happening. I remember something about this. Have I seen this picture? I don't know. Look it up. Is it the one and it's like kind of spread out? Yeah. And it's all these people in front of it? I mean, that's yes. what you just described. I mean, but yeah, I think I've I mean, seen if you're it. a mentalist, you really. <laughs> yeah, it's like sepia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen that. Sorry, but what were you going to say? So uh, so that's the picture. And in 1963, uh, Jack Pearl claimed that this picture existed. But since the 60s, many people claim that they saw this picture, including. Um, so like it, apparently at the time for the 60s, it went viral. People saw this picture. Yeah. Um, including cryptozoologist Ivan T. Sanderson, who was one of the people who was involved with the Minnesota Iceman. Oh, yeah. So even he says, like, I've seen this picture. Absolutely. But in the 1990s to the for 30 years now, nobody can actually find Mandela this picture. Effect. That's where I've heard it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. OK, I was like, I've definitely because I know the picture. And then I remember them on Reddit being like, you know, that Thunderbird picture. And I'm like, yeah. 
And it was nowhere on the internet. They So they've been saying since the 60s, it exists. We have this picture, but nobody could ever show it. Everyone said, I either saw it in National Geographic, or I saw it in this magazine, or I saw it on this news outlet, and no one can find it. So in the 1990s, oh my God. because the photo was still nowhere to be found, Strange Magazine searched everywhere for it and like reached out to their readers, like, someone find this picture. They found dozens of readers who said that they had seen the picture, but nobody could place where they had seen it. So in 2006, CryptoMundo.com published two photos and one drawing of the, the Thunderbird just to see if just to gauge people's reactions. And they post these pictures with the caption lost Thunderbird photo found. And many commenters commenters said that they had uh, this was not the photo they were thinking of. So just to see like if everyone had the same oh, understanding, yeah. they put out fake pictures oh God, this is freaking me out. to be like, is this the lost picture everyone is thinking of? Yikes. Just to, like, trick everyone and every single person who has no idea where they saw the picture from was still able to say, this is not the picture So it wasn't, like, a of. mass thing where they were like, oh, wait, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I they were like, saying. I know what I'm thinking of, but that's not the picture. And I can picture exactly the photograph in my head. Yeah. So it's, like, a group of men standing in front of... I know exactly the photo because I've seen it on Reddit and people are like, no, I can describe it. And it's exactly what I picture, but I don't know why I would have seen it. I mean... It's because everyone's seen it at, for a second, I think. It's so weird. Do you guys know what we're talking about? Well, hang on. I'm in the middle of my notes where they'll find out. Well, no, I'm asking like if they've seen it. I want to know if other people like are like, oh, I know that photo. Yes. Oh. Shut up. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm trying I know, to I know, be I know, I know. Uh, inclusive. Play along Wait, with us. In the comments. <laughs> in the comments below. <laughs> Subscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, so some people had said they'd seen the picture in a book, but when they looked again, it was gone. So then there Gross. was this argument that there was like a glitch in the matrix or right. an alternate reality because this picture no longer existed in like in places that people swore they'd seen them. Yeah. And uh, many people also actually thought there was a theory that the government sent time travelers to erase the picture because <gasps> they didn't want us knowing about oh it. Oh, my God. So where is this picture? Christine. What? The phrase you've been saying. Mandela effect. That Kay. one? Yes. Oh. Or a collectively shared uh false memory which i i don't believe in the mandel effect sorry in advance everyone i i don't think it's real because whatever it doesn't matter but um when you cover it we can discuss it. we can just i think it's interesting but i think most of the time it's like a mass shared thing however i did fall into this one i don't know i can't explain this one there you go it's fascinating so the photo was never taken but its description is so vivid that it created a shared false memory that people still swear by um, oh, so it is a false memory? Or that's just yeah, one of the no, theories? It, it is a false memory. It doesn't, the picture does not exist. Or it, it How someone. How do we know if it's not a Mandela effect? Oh, so, okay. But we don't know that it's It not was never it. put any, like, someone made a fake picture and then put it somewhere and just threw a collective false shared memory. Mm. I think someone was able to doctor a version that everyone saw in their head. And so it kind of reaffirmed, like, oh, that's the picture I've seen, but nobody. That's so weird, though. But how many, how would so many people know it? I don't know. So in the 1930s to the 1940s, one of the actual ranchers from that shot it down yeah. said that they never caught up to the creature and oh. the horses got spooked and it flew away. So it confirms that like we never caught it to be able to take a picture. Or the government came in and said, tell them you never caught it. That's the thing we're going to mm -hmm. believe. Conspiracy. More fun. Also in 1970, that story was confirmed because one of the rancher's childhood best friends was like, yeah, I've heard that story a million times my whole life. They never got yeah. that thing. Okay, well. So <laughs> no one ever took a picture with it. The only one that could exist is a doctored one that was created after sure. so many people swore they'd seen a picture that someone actually drew it so mm. well and it matched with everyone's mem fake memory of yeah. it that now people are like, oh, yeah, that's the picture I saw. But people are like, well, I, I drew that That's after so the fact. weird. Okay. So interestingly, according to a lot of native tribes, uh, even if people think they have seen the Thunderbird, none of them could actually be a real Thunderbird. Because if you remember the very mm -hmm. beginning quote that I said, no person has ever seen an actual Thunderbird. Right. Even in their dreams or in visions, um, Thunderbirds have no actual physical form. If they do have any physical form at all, and if you were at all able to see one, it would still be only a glimmer or a piece. Got it. You've n no one's ever seen a whole Thunderbird. It doesn't even matter if you're a prominent man. Exactly. So any eyewitness sightings, by definition, cannot be Thunderbirds. They're something else. And in fact, it's probably disrespectful to suggest that anyone could see a Thunderbird. Right. Um, so modern sightings and cryptozoological accounts say that a Thunderbird... Um, could be a giant eagle, 
But it, that still doesn't make sense because it has such a massive wingspan mm. that like totally like it like counts it dwarfs out or, the yeah. idea of of an of a bald eagle. Weird. So um it's so massive and if estimates are real, let's pretend that everyone who thinks they've seen a thunderbird really has. It was definitely a thunderbird, and their estimates from far away guessing the wingspan of this creature was real. Um, then these are birds that have not been identified by science. The largest known bird is the wandering albatross with a wingspan of 12 at the largest, at 12 feet. Um, And then the largest predatory birds, which are the most like a thunderbird, um, are condors with a 10-foot wingspan. Mm. So the fact that on average it's 15 to 20 is unheard of scientifically. So they could be a descendant of a pterosaur, um, so like a pterodactyl or something like that. And the ranchers did describe it having an alligator head, so it is more dinosaur than than bird. Like reptilian, yeah. And uh, so, fun fact, pterosaurs are flying reptiles. They're the very first vertebrates to have evolved uh, powered flight. Fun fact. Birds are. Or wait, what? Pterosaurs. Oh, pterosaurs. They're flying. They're the only vertebrates to have, uh, over time, developed. um, Crazy. Powered flight. Crazy. So, historians Adrian Mayer and Tom Holland. Yes, Spider-Man. Not actual (laughs) Spider-Man. Another Tom Holland. Okay. But we're going to pretend Spider-Man, like, had something to say about the Thunderbirds. He flies around a lot. Uh, they said that the Thunderbird is based on pterosaur fossils found by natives at one point. And so they probably, um, found these fossils, created this like image of what the creature probably looked like. And then through oral stories over time, Mm. the Thunderbird kind of evolved into Mm. their traditions. Interesting. Um, that being said, if we're talking realistically, like what this could be, pterosaur is a, a good idea. Like it's a good argument, but it's more likely that it's actually a terra torn which oh, is an that? extinct giant bird, which is an ancestor of the vulture. Oh, ew, vultures are creepy. Which did live among humans, so there is a chance that someone could have seen one and talked about it, oh. and it could have been passed on. Oh, interesting. So those fossils have been also found in the La Brea Tar Pits, the Argentinian Mountains, Cuba, and Nevada. Wow. And the largest terratorn fossil to date suggests that the bird was 180 pounds with a 20 to 26 foot wingspan. Holy crap. And that's a real creature. Yeah. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. So the biggest argument to this is that the Thunderbird, uh, the biggest argument against this, like, no, it's not a terratorn, is because um, the Thunderbird wings are feathered and a pterosaur or a terratorn wings are bat-like. Mm. but it is still the most likely theory like you could have they could have just added colorful feathers onto this creature sure. over time through the stories wow um but they think it's probably if it does exist it's probably just a descendant of like a really large vulture um and that's the thunder that bird. is so crazy okay that's so cool i feel like there's so much in there there's like uh cryptozoology and folklore and like the mandela effect potentially or yeah. you know it's all spooky ooky yeah yikes oh my god i got a lot of goose cam in that one. Oh, good thank you em of course yeah that was fun um before okay. you tell your story should we let geo out oh he's, he's lying not, down. yeah he's just sleeping i thought he was waiting for me no or for he's you just sleeping all, all right. right anyway that was the thunderbird i hope you enjoyed it thank you em i did thoroughly enjoy it that and was... of course there's many um movies and shows and stories and books and items about the thunderbird i just never mentioned any of those but 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 just know like there's there's a lot of scary movies and stuff about the thunderbird and things like that right right okay great well so i'm gonna tell you my story now um so this one uh was suggested also by close friends on instagram uh danny beaupre 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 hi danny danny so danny uh suggested the story of dorothy jane scott and this one is super creepy Oh, well, I do love the creeps. Give them to me. creeps. Okay. She's a super creep. Super creep. Super creepy. How? I hated that. Okay. Don't play that one backwards. It's not going to end well (laughs) for anybody. (laughs) Okay. So this is the story of Dorothy Jane Scott, which is interesting because I just realized I did Dorothea Puente last week. So I think I'm on a weird kick, but Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So May of 1980. 32-year-old single mother, Dorothy Jane Scott. She lives a pretty mundane life. She lives in Stanton, California, which is like in kind of Orange County, Southern California area. Cool. And she has a four-year-old son named Shanti, and his nickname is Sean. And um, she's a single mother. And so she basically her whole life is like going to work, uh, taking care of her four-year-old kid. She didn't have a lot of money, um, so don't let the Orange County part fool you. Sure. 
Uh, she actually would <clears throat> sew her own clothes from old curtains so that she could like buy clothes for her Aww. boy. Like she was like, so she's a spectacular mother, spectacular mother. I um, see. Gave him whatever he needed. Uh, was a great mom. And so the reason she ended up in Southern California, she had divorced Sean's father and they had moved uh, from Missouri down to Southern California where they would live with her parents and her aunt. So they moved into her aunt's home in Stanton and uh, her parents, whose names are Jacob and Vera lived a few miles away in Anaheim. So when she moves there, she starts a job and um, she works as a secretary in a shop called Swinger's Psych Shop. Oh. And Custom John's Head Shop, which was next door. Okay. So those are both in Anaheim. And um, her dad had, like, owned those companies and had sold them. Uh, so she stayed on and worked as a secretary in those in those stores. Um, so every morning she would drive to her parents' house, drop Sean off, and go to work. And in the evening she would pick him up, drive home, try to spend as much time with him as possible before bed. And uh, then do the same thing all over again the next day. She, Whew. I know. Just oh my a gosh. Day to day routine. Um, she was a devout Christian. She didn't drink. She didn't party. She rarely went out outside the house. She mostly just wanted to spend time with her son and go to work. Um, went to church. You know, just basic routine. I mean, a friend actually of hers said that <laughs> this is kind of rude, I think, but they called her life dull as a phone book. Uh, I'm like, well, I mean, that's just her priorities. Dull as a phone book. If I didn't have to leave the house ever, I wouldn't either. So, okay. Um, so, anyway. So, she's super generous, though, and people, like, knew her as being an extremely generous person. Um, her brother once said that she exemplified the word give, because she would just give and give and give no matter Aww. what it cost her. Wow, so she's just, like, a spectacular woman. She's just, like, a, yeah, a spectacular human. And, I see. Um, unfortunately, things did not go so well well i, I never expect them to <laughs> no. i never expect them to no they don't i'm glad imagine that... the day where you end a story with oh when they lived happily ever after I'd <laughs> the be like, end. what that would be uh someday maybe we'll get to that in like 200 years if you play any like fairy tale backwards actually <laughs> then you get in that's why we drink oh oh that's right we're literally the opposite of a fairy tale no one lives happily ever after how sad okay sorry that we're doing this to you um <laughs> So in the months prior to May 28th, this is still in 1980, Dorothy begins to receive taunting phone calls hmm. from an unknown male. Oh, no. Sometimes the caller would call at her home in Stanton, but more often they would call her workplace. And the random calls would alternate. So sometimes they would be really complimentary, call her beautiful, like pledge their love to her and their devotion to her. And then they would switch. Sometimes they would be sinister, angry, extremely violent and threatening. And the, let's not forget, like, that he... This person knows her home and work number. Oh, yeah. It gets worse. Great. Uh, so it's not like she's, like, safe at home because they're taunting right. her at work. It's not like they're just prank calling her work. Exactly. Oof. Exactly. So Dorothy tells others. So she tells other people about the callers or the calls. And she says the voice sounds vaguely familiar, but she can't remember. She can't place it. She's like, I feel like I've heard this voice, but I can't figure out who it is. And so the caller tells Dorothy, like you said, he's following her every move. He even, will, like pretty much every time he calls describes what she's wearing to prove that he's watching her oh my god so he literally knew like her day-to-day -day so she he was there yeah he too. could yeah he could see Ugh. her or he followed her and so he could he could he knew what she was wearing which was like the creepiest part because yeah like you said it means he was there um and her routine so if he's like oh you went to church this morning or you went to here today like he would know um Ugh. one day he told her to get out of her car or sorry to get out of work and go to her car because he had left a gift for her she walks out to her car and discovers a dead rose on the windshield <gasps> oh yikes neither alive or dead i hate it but <laughs> right, dead's a little worse dead's like you intentionally waited for it to die uh -huh. before you put it there or you don't care a whole lot about me because you just pulled one out of the trash or you pulled it out of the trash right <laughs> Uh, like, oh, oh, she'll love this. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> she gets it. I'm on a budget. It's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe next Valentine's Day, don't take uh, this person's advice. It doesn't seem, no. doesn't seem very romantic. At one point, the caller says it escalates, obviously. And he says, OK, now you're going to come my way. And when I get you alone, I will cut you up into bits so no one will ever find you. And what'd she do? Go, okay. Like, wh how, what do you do at that point? So she, at this point, considers buying a gun. She was, like, very anti-firearm. And she considers buying a gun, but she, like, lives alone with her young son. And she's like, I just don't feel comfortable having a gun in the home. So instead, she starts taking self-defense classes. Um, and she starts, she's like, I don't know. There's nothing else I can do. I mean, She doesn't call the police? You can't call the police. What are they going to do? If someone's calling me over and over? Like, there's nothing you can do. Ugh. 
it's like the same in all these stalker stories it's horrifying because like they have all the power i mean there's nothing you can do you can be like oh somebody's calling me but like That's awful. if you don't know who it is you don't know where it's coming from and they haven't even done anything to you except give you a f- dead flower Ugh. um it's, there's just not much room to do anything so she tar- starts taking self-defense classes which i guess is the best thing you could do in this scenario um, and then May 28th, 1980, so it's like any other day, uh, she takes Sean to his grandparents' house, her parents' house, and arrives at work. So after a long day, uh, she picks up Sean, heads home for a few hours, and then she has a meeting with, like, an employee meeting at the shops. So she, like routine, goes to the scheduled employee meeting and drops her parents off, and it's 9 p.m. at this point. She's at this meeting, and she notices that her coworker, whose name is Conrad Bostron, he doesn't look well, like he looks sick and um, he's pale, he's agitated, he's like sweating and they're like, are you okay? And he's like, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then she notices that he has like this red mark on his arm and it's swelling and there's like a rash around it. And she's like, mm. I need to take you to the hospital, something's wrong. So they go to UC Irvine Medical Center um, and one of their coworkers named Pam volunteers to go with them. So Dorothy drives, the three of them go to the hospital And on the way, she stops by her parents' home to check on Sean. And for whatever reason, she changes her scarf from a black scarf to a red scarf, hops back in the car, and then drives the two to the hospital. So 20 to 25 minutes later, they arrive at the emergency room. It turns out that Conrad had been bitten by a black widow spider. So, like, this is like... he was not doing hot. Oh, no. He was, uh... Dying. He was in very big trouble. So, uh, at this point, it was very good that she brought him to the emergency room. As I said, she was, like, very Was he hoping he would become Spider-Man? maybe maybe i do think if i got bit by a spider i'd be like give it five minutes just, just wait let's just see that what happens. happens in the good place he's he's gonna get an mri and they're like what are you holding and he's like nothing and they're like are you holding a spider so you just you never know maybe maybe it's gonna happen one day i, I have i have a feeling it's about happened it. before it could happen again it has happened in three different versions of the same story exactly. if you look at marvel so statistically speaking the pattern (laughs) the pattern is there look either i'm gonna be i'm gonna be bitten by a spider or i'm going to be dressed in iron and fighting in space it's fine there's only two potential options (laughs) potential (laughs) we'll find out which one it is so it turns out he had been bitten by black widow um which is obviously high well not obviously i guess if you're not from this part of the world but it's a highly venomous spider uh found in southern california and doctors rush him in for treatment it is treatable um if you catch it in time so Pam and Dorothy are hanging out in the waiting room. They're reading magazines. They're just talking. Um, and Pam said, like, the only time Dorothy would got, get up was if she had to use the bathroom. But other than that, everything seemed pretty normal. And then around 11 p.m., so only like two hours later, uh, Conrad is discharged. But he needs to fill a prescription before he leaves. So Dorothy's like, okay, I'm going to go get my car. She drives a 1973 Toyota station wagon. She's like, I'm going to go get it from the parking garage. You guys go to the pharmacy real quick in the hospital. And I'll swing by and pick you up out front. Got it. So, uh, Pam and Conrad go to the pharmacy while Dorothy goes to get her car. 20 minutes later, Pam and Conrad have their prescription. They're waiting out front and they are a little confused because Dorothy's still not there. And they're like, oh my God, that's weird. Like the, the garage is only five, 10 minute max away. Um, so it's, it's a little weird. It's been 20 minutes and she's still not out front. And so then suddenly they see Dorothy's station wagon heading their way and they're like, okay, thank God there's her car. At first, they're relieved, um, but then they notice that the car is speeding toward them and, like, driving erratically and, like, speeding all down the road and, like, swerving. And they're like, okay. So they try to flag her down. (sighs) But when they try to flag her down, um, the car's high beams turn on and, like, blind them so they can't see. It's middle of the night. They can't see into the driver's seat. And so they can't confirm who was driving the car. Yikes. Then uh, the car takes off and pulls speeds out of the parking lot and they're basically like i mean maybe there was a family emergency like who knows what happened um and so they kind of waited for a while so pam actually waited for two hours hoping she would return because she's like why wouldn't she come back she knew we were waiting for her and then she calls dorothy's parents being like where the heck is she and dorothy's parents say we're like sean is still here she hasn't come to pick him up we haven't heard from her either so this is two hours later and they're like, we need to call the police at this point because where the yeah. heck is she? Where yeah, did yeah, she yeah. go? So um, it's up for speculation whether, like, some people think, like, right at first pe- the police didn't necessarily take it that seriously. But also, you know, she's a 30-something-year-old woman, like, and they said, oh, it's been two hours since we saw her. That's, you know, not the most alarming statement. Yeah, and I guess you're not taking every case really 
seriously. Right. I mean, a lot of times people are found. Yeah. You know? And also, but, like, if they knew, like, she's very by the book, like, super routine and... Right. Like, she is pretty selfless with her time, like, and she was expected to show up and then she almost runs them over. Yeah. Like, it's all very out of character. It is very out of character, but at the same time, they're like, but we did see her car. Maybe she ran off somewhere, had to do... You know, so at first... Yeah, exactly. So they weren't sure um, if they should take it seriously at first. But um, a few hours later, at approximately 4.30 a.m., which is less than six hours after she was last seen, police find Dorothy's 1973 Toyota station wagon in an alley more than 10 miles away in Santa Ana, and it's engulfed in flames. (gasps) Oh, no. They check the car. All of her belongings are inside, but Dorothy is nowhere to be found. Well, great. Yeah. So they're like, okay, never mind. You were right. This is (laughs) something has gone (laughs) terribly wrong. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. My bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah. Um, so police, uh, at first tell Dorothy's family, like her parents, I feel like I need to turn toward you. I feel like I keep like, hold on. Look into my eyes. No, I'm like t- craning my neck. Oh, <laughs> I thought you just wanted to be closer to me. I do. That's my big I just want to look into your baby browns and melt. That's you my know? big secret. Ugh. Is it worth it? They're piercing. <laughs> You're like, you looked away immediately. I, I looked <laughs> for a second and I hated it. Now my face is covered. Up. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. I'm just going to tell the story. Okay. Okay. So at first, police tell uh, Dorothy's family to please keep quiet about Dorothy's disappearance. They say, don't talk to the media. Don't publicize this in any way because um, we want to make sure that the details are not in the paper so that if we actually find this person, we can test whether they are the real culprit or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. God, sorry. Now my whole face is literally covered in the screen and people are going to yell. I can't do this right. What do we do? What am I doing that you're not doing? I don't know. I think I'm just bad at this. I think I'm just talking louder into a diagonal Maybe. direction. Maybe. I'm just throwing my voice. Maybe. No, I'm just scooching closer. <laughs> now those baby browns are right where I want them. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I want to be so close. You can smell my native deodorant. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, it's working. It's working. Okay. I'm so sorry. All right. So they tell them, please, like, don't talk to the media yet. We want to we wanna see if we can... Uh, keep this on the dl so one week after dorothea's disappearance vera her mother receives a phone call at her house fuck i already hate this yes it's bad the male caller asks vera if she's related to dorothy so at this point she's hopeful like oh maybe this person has information for me oh uh, so you're so quick to say yes yeah so she's instead says, of being like no who the fuck is yeah, this Yeah, exactly because she's waiting for tips you know and she she also hasn't been able to talk to the media or anybody right, right, so right, right, she's right. like oh yeah i am i'm her mother and the caller simply responds I've got her <gasps> and hangs up. <sighs> oh, goose cam. So after two weeks, um, after this phone call and they have heard nothing more from the police, Jacob, Dorothy's dad is like, fuck it. I'm going to contact the media. Cause he's like, sure. if, if there nothing else is going on, like I need to h- all the help I can get. So he goes to the media and the Santa Ana register runs a story about Dorothy's disappearance on June 12th, 1980. The following day, the managing editor of the newspaper receives a fucking phone call, and the caller does not identify himself, shocking, but tells the editor, quote, I killed her. I killed Dorothy Scott. She was my love. I caught her cheating with another man. She denied having someone else. I killed her. What? And, like, are we referring, like, she cheated by taking a, diff- a man to a hospital? Is, I don't know. Is that what this means? Okay. Maybe? I don't know. I would think, like, he was following her the whole time, and then he saw her take him take another With a man guy. in the car, maybe? Mm-hmm. And then lost it. Right. Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, Pat Riley. So, okay. Okay. Sorry. So, Pat Riley, who was the, the managing editor, editor of the newspaper who received the call, said the caller knew details about, I thought it was her clothing, about Dorothy's clothing. Got it. He knew about the red scarf. Yeah, so he was definitely following her to it the was, hospital. So it was that guy. Because at first they're like, well, it could be a prank call. You know, people call and are like, I did it and whatever. But she said they knew it was real when he said she changed her scarf from black to red. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. Yeah, so he's following this whole time. Uh, he also tells the editor that Dorothy called him from the hospital. Although Pam, was, who was with her this whole time, was like, no, she didn't because I was with her. Right. She got right. up briefly to use the bathroom, but like she never went to find a phone or anything. And obviously they didn't have cell phones at this point. So right. like, there was no way. So she's like, that's bullshit. So the investigation continues. Um, police obviously check 
the first culprits, her ex-husband, uh, who's Sean's father. He had the airtight alibi of being like 2,000 miles away, tons of witnesses. Like there was no way he would have done it. And the police also rule out coworkers. Uh, customers at the shop weren't really considered suspects because she worked in the back and like rarely interacted with customers. So wow. it, it wasn't like there's somebody who came in every day to see her or anything like that. Um, but the worst part is the taunting calls to Dorothy's mother continued every single Wednesday. She received a call. <sighs> And she would always answer because she wants to get as much information as she can, thinking maybe her daughter's still alive, you know. Even though he's admitted he he, he killed her. Well, yeah. But then he also said, I have her at one point. You right. know, he could be just, just desperate for her. answers. Exactly. And even if she is dead, like, she wants to know where is she. Um, and so, basically, Vera gets a call every single Wednesday, and Gia wants to go out the door. Yes. I am so sorry. You talk. I'm out of breath. Ooh, those stairs were steep. All right. I'm so sorry, everybody. Ooh. I'm sorry to Em. I'm sorry to Eva. This is my big apology. Sorry to my lungs. I'm on an apology tour. Okay. Whew. Sorry to your nervous system. All right. Can you, hon, can you hear my... No. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? I was like, can, oh. you, can you hear my heart beating? I'm just like through their neck onto the microphone. Okay. I wanted to know if you can hear what I feel. Your pulse. Okay, I'm so sorry. We were at a really creepy part, um, and Geo interrupted. What else is new? Mm-hmm. Okay, so where could we be? Who the heck knows? Where could we be? Who the heck knows? We could be where he reckon, uh, the she's still getting calls every Wednesday. Yes. I do remember this, but I can't find the bullet point. He recognized her red scarf Wednesday. and said that. Here we go. So the okay. caller always called on Wednesday. <laughs> yes. And always hung up before it could be traced. So obviously she told the police, like, hey, maybe we can, you know, they're like, maybe we can track him. But every time he called, he was smart enough to hang up the phone before a trace could be made. Sure. The calls go on like clockwork every Wednesday for almost three years. <gasps> oh, my God. At that point, I would just be like, my kid's dead. Isn't that horrific? Yeah. Well, I think they knew she was dead, but they wanted to find her oh, I see. Find him. I thought he, she was like still hoping for leads on the phone calls. I mean, maybe, but like leads at, le- at least like where her where she is or wh- yeah, who he yeah, is yeah. i mean who he is no, especially that makes sense. um and so the calls continued for almost three years then in april of 1984 um jacob answered the phone instead of vera and the caller just said nothing and immediately hung up and they were like that's strange huh so a couple months later august 6 1984 so this is four years later a construction worker along santa Ana nope santa Ana canyon road in anaheim discovers oh <laughs> Lot, Santa Ana right? Canyon in Anaheim. Yeah, it's a lot, huh? Yeah. Uh, in Anna, I'm glad it's not just me. Discovers uh, the skeletal remains of a human body alongside some dog bones on the side of the road. Mm. The bones were partially scorched, but this was, and at first I was like, oh, the car fire. But apparently it was due to a wildfire that had engulfed the area in 82. So the bones had all been burned by this wildfire. I see. And through dental records, a watch that was found with the bones and a turquoise ring Uh, Found with the remains, the body was identified as Dorothy Jane Scott. And the watch, this is horrifying, had stopped at 12.30 a.m. on May 29th, 1980, the night she disappeared. Wow. So she she was dead the whole time. Well, I think perhaps, but I think, like, whatever happened to her, the, the killer, like, either took out the battery? I don't know. I don't know how he would stop. I feel like at least assaulted her enough that, that like her, cl- that yeah. her watch went off. oh that's like, true got funky that's true like she could have banged it on something that's true that's true that's true yeah that's probably more likely still super creepy yeah so twelve thirty the night she disappeared so police speculate she had been killed like you said within hours of her abduction but the condition of dorothy's remains make it impossible to determine how she was killed because it they had been out there so long and had been you know in a fire right. and all this stuff so there was uh one more call made by the unidentified caller Uh, He called after it was released that Dorothy's remains had been recovered. And he called Vera and said, is Dorothy home? Fuck off. Are you serious? Is that not just the most sickening bullshit you've ever heard? And with that, as fucking horrifying as it is, uh, her case went cold. And to this day, no, not one person has been charged with her presumed abduction and murder. It blows my mind that people, someone got away with like someone. Oh, yeah. So I could have walked past them at the grocery store. Exactly. Someone got away with it and barely, like, even, and fucking had fun with it for years without even getting caught. It's sick. Like, was so confident. I, I always love the stories where someone Mm -hmm. is so 
overly con- like the narcissist cases yes. where they're so overly confident of course get caught immediately it leads them but right. like when someone is so cocky about i'm not gonna get caught and then actually don't it's like it's just like they added win. it's an added jab of like oh, absolutely they win it's awful and the yikes. parents just get basically no closure they're traumatized fuck yeah and so obviously like there are theories as to who it is but nobody's ever been charged so i'm gonna read you the theories real quick yeah so uh a prevalent theory reportedly from um sean scott her son himself who believes this uh is there was this guy named he was a transient mountain man is what he was called okay and his name was mike butler uh he was this eccentric religious zealot whose sister uh, apparently became a well-known singer and used to work at Swinger's Psych Shop and Custom John's Head Shop. Oh. And because his sister worked there, he would come in to visit from time to time. Right. And that is perhaps why they think Dorothy found the caller's voice familiar, but not so familiar that I she see. could pinpoint who it was, because maybe that she had out. heard it a couple times. Mm-hmm. Appo- apparently, reportedly, allegedly, he was obsessed with Dorothy. He was also rumored to be involved in cult-like activities, which people kind of connect to the dog bones that were found with her bones. Interesting. Thinking, like, maybe there was some cult or occult meaning behind dog bones, which some people believe. I don't know if you know anything about that. I don't know about... I don't think there's, like, dog bones in that anything, but I know, like, black fur, like, dog bones. Uh, fur i googled it a little bit and i found like dog skulls sometimes as people okay. use which is disturbing to me deeply um but I, know, I don't know i know fur like black fur is sometimes uh. and i'm speaking totally like out of what i've heard and it could totally not be accurate sure. but i'm i think black dog fur is used in curses oh ew creepy yeah well black dog i guess that's like a huge symbolism it's, yeah it's like a isn't it like the escort to hell and yeah all that? yeah hmm. yikes okay well uh so there were dog bones found with her some people uh like i mean but then you have to remember it's the 80s like satanic panic everyone was like oh my god it's a cult right it's a cult like it satanic could have not been a cult. It, it could right it might have honestly just been like a happy wiccan and like <laughs> like and, or it could have been a dog that or found it could have been her, a fucking dog yeah her body and died or i don't know like who knows what it could be exactly but like as soon as you hear that like someone's into rituals it's like you're you just immediately assume it's like something awful so yeah well i just i like i think to assume her murder was like some sort of occult ritual is a little bit like outlandish outlandish yeah i mean it, it's possible could be. yeah it is possible could also very much not and be. if he really was like involved in occult stuff and it wasn't just a rumor then sure like this seems right on the nose but you know right. it's, it's all alleged um he so this is an interesting like potential side note on that is that he since he frequented the shops he would have also known dorothy's dad jacob who like owned the shops and so that's why they think maybe the caller hung up when he answered because he knew Mm. he knew her dad personally i see and didn't want to get recognized so when vera answered who like didn't work at the shops right he would taunt her but then the second her husband answered he was like i don't want to be recognized because he knows interesting isn't that disturbing Ugh. Um, Mike Butler died in 2014, um, and his obituary apparently <laughs> said, like, this is just like a side note. It's not really related. It's just a weird coincidence, but he was like a roadie for the Beach Boys who were also associated with like the Manson murders. Um, so I don't know. There's just weird shit going on there too. Um, unfortunately there's no like solid evidence that ever connected him to Dorothy's murder, but it's pretty much like the main running theory, I would say. Got it. Um, And thanks to, obviously, the dog bones and the satanic panic of the 80s, um, it's possible, or people have suggested as a possibility that this was just an occult ritual, and that's that, which I'm like, well, she had a stalker, so I don't know that it was necessarily a a random happenstance occult ritual that just, you know. They didn't just find her on the road, and they were like, we're going to use you as (laughs) for a ritual now. perfect. Yeah. Um, another theory suggests that Dorothy was a victim, of, this is interesting, of, of the Golden State Killer. Oh. Because he actually was operative in that area. Sure. At the time. So, like, the timeline actually matches up. And, you know, actually, come to think of it, he did call his victims to taunt them for years. Right. Oh, wow. I never really thought about that one. But, like, yeah, he would huh. he would call his victims afterward and taunt them years, for decades. Interesting. Wow, that... Okay. All right. All right. I'll keep it. In my head as a potential I'll theory. I'll bite, yeah. I'll bite. <laughs> and then a final theory is that she was connected, this disappearance was connected to um, the disappearance of another woman named Patricia Jean Schneider, who disappeared two years after Dorothy in Pedley, California, which is less than an hour from where Dorothy's remains were found. Um, but they have never actually discovered Patricia's remains, although her car was also found on fire within 
hours of her disappearance. So it's like Interesting. a similar MO, if that makes sense. Sure. And come to think of it, I don't think the Golden State Killer like set anyone's car on fire, but he did a lot of other shit, so who knows? Yeah. Um, sadly, Jacob Scott, her father, died in 1994, and Vera passed on in 2014, so 20 years after uh, wow. Jacob, and they never found <clears throat> justice for uh, for Dorothy. Yikes. Sean, though, her son, is still alive, and he is still seeking information. He's still hoping to find his mother's murderer. If anyone has any information, by any chance at all, um, about the murder of Dorothy Jane Scott, please contact the Orange County Sheriff's Department in California at 714-647-7000. And then um, I want to add one thing about, like, stalking in general, which is something that I just uh, always want to add a little note to. Um, And, like, you know, the first thing you might think is, like, why the fuck wouldn't you go to the police? Um, And at this point, like, if you think about it, the laws on the books today, um, like, are different than the ones in the 80s. And there was no – first of all, there were no laws against stalking or harassment. It just wasn't considered a crime unless you, like, actually physically harmed somebody right. or, like, broke into their home. Um, and so it was very easy for people to just kind of do this without any sort of repercussions. And obviously, so, like, it's just a phone call. There was no proof who it was. There was no way to trace it. And so um, this just was not considered a crime whatsoever. And uh, the Cal- state of California was actually the first in the nation to implement stalking, li- uh, stalking laws because of, like, remember Rebecca Schaefer, who mm-hmm. was shot by her stalker? Yeah. And the, um, there's an, a, um, there was a mass shooting in 1988 in Sunnyvale, which was um, committed by Richard Wade Farley. I have not covered that one yet. I did cover Rebecca Schaefer in episode 28, though. Um, and so these are all, like, cases of stalking leading to murder. So it's like, hey, this is a serious crime. Right. That can result in death. Um, and so it's much more difficult now for stalkers to obtain information about their victims, but this didn't happen until 1990. And even today, as far as I'm concerned, stalking laws are not nearly stringent enough or strict enough as they should be. Um, oftentimes stalking, like the safety of stalking victims is not prioritized. It's extremely hard to like, if, I mean, I watch that show obsession sometimes and it's so frustrating because like people go to the police and they're like, this man, I know who he is and he keeps calling me, but it's like okay, he's calling you. There's not much yeah, we can do. Like, like a restraining order that he could probably walk right through. Right, like, exactly. And restraining orders are proven to like often no. not, and most of the time not work. So um, sometimes piss them off even further. Right, or lead know? to actual violence. Exactly. And if you have children or you're, you're scared for your life, I mean, anyway. So on April 4th, interestingly enough, 2019, the Violence Against Women Act of 1994, and to be clear, it is a gender neutral uh, law, even though the name suggests otherwise. Oh, wow. Uh, passed the House for reauthorization. But ever since, it has stalled completely since April of last year. And no action has been taken. So it's been sitting on the Senate Majority Leader's desk for almost a year. So we can hope that it's reinstated. Um, but at this point, it's kind of in limbo. And uh, that sucks. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, want to learn more about that. There are a lot of resources online, and if you are being, you know, a victim of this or know someone who is, uh, there are people who will take it seriously, even if maybe you don't think the police will. So that mm-hmm. is my note on stalking. <laughs> and it's horrific. So, yeah, that's that. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Sorry about that. That's the story of Dorothy Jane Scott <clears throat> and the creepiest fucking unsolved thing in the world. Who is he? And the fact that he was so obsessed with her before... I want to know what the car movement was. I wonder if that was... Me too. Did he break into her car and oh. was he trying to drive and she was trying to stop him? That's and, my thought, or, right? I mean, my thought was that she got in the car to help. He was hiding in the trunk. Or and that, then she was oof. trying to either, like, get their attention that, like, I need help. Right. Or maybe she was, like, trying to, like, stop the car and he was fighting her and making her continue to drive or they they were fighting over the wheel or... Yeah, my thought would be, like, he probably saw her leaving the hospital approached her got her in the car and was like dry i mean that would be oh, my guess. my thought was that he was hiding in the car and she or got that in. i or mean that. no matter what it's awful it's fucking terrible yes it's horrific so uh yikes it, no it, matter what it's bad and i'm sorry and that's our podcast and slogan. i hope it made you happy i hope this really put a <laughs> smile on your face just play it backwards to soothe yourself we really do have some wild people like who are like this is the best part of my day when i listen to you guys i'm like oh my goodness i'm so sorry that 
Like, this is such a sad story. I hope you, like, I find a better a better thing. Well, think about my my godmother, my grandparents being like, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, um, yeah, this is my passion. I don't know how to tell people what I do, because depending on when I'm in L.A., it's fine. Because if I say I'm a podcaster, they're like, oh, yeah, well, that, you know, it's an it's kind of becoming it's entertainment more to- industry related. Exactly. Right. But then I go back to Virginia and my mom's like, we're going to have a, a party and all my friends are coming over. So be on your best behavior. I, she says to her 27 year old. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a podcaster. And they're like, so what do you actually do? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm so self- <laughs> I just sit here. I'm so self-deprecating about it. I'm always like, oh, believe it or not, I'm a podcaster. It's so millennial and stupid. And I hate it. I hate how stupid it sounds. And people are like, Gee, calm down. I'm like, I know you're going to make fun of me. Okay, God. Well, because there's other people who say, oh, everyone's got a podcast. What do you actually do? And I'm like, no, my, mine's kind of good, I think. No, I mean, I don't know. Somebody, well, Rothy's lets us do it sometimes. It's like, sometimes I talk about Christine's boobs. Does that make it better? Actually, like so much not. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for listening and also allowing us to be self-deprecating and also allowing us to talk about Googling. We go from vain to like really hating oh, ourselves so quickly. Isn't that the, isn't it's that... the Gemini lifestyle. Yeah. Welcome. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I hope everyone's having a good week. Are we in Pisces season now? Don't look at me. I don't know. I think we are. Ha- Hello to the oh, Pisces. Oh yes, we're in Pisces season. Sayonara to the Aquarius. Um, we are in Pisces season. And uh, we hope everyone's having a good time. If you haven't gotten tickets to our shows, please, please come. Um, if we are in your area. Don't. And that's why we drink dot com slash live. Uh, if you have personal stories you'd like to submit for listeners episodes, you can also submit them. And that's why we drink dot com. Um, just I guess it's go- all there. Everyone have a have a good a good week. Do something self-soothing after this. This was a lot. Go take a bath. Go take a bath or I get a massage or do whatever you need to listen to the office just listen to it close your eyes Don't. listen to office ladies watch the office there we period go. okay Perfect. great okay that's and our ad that's why we drink <laughs> and that's why we need to end help <laughs>